بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بد نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحم الحمد لله بيف توفيق تو امبارك on our next journey in a study of Islamic spirituality and mysticism uh, on the day of Qadir I congratulate you for Eid al-Ghadir and request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this stage and this step for us. And also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his rahman maghfara to the soul of uh, all our scholars and in particular the late Ayatollah Shuja'i that we are going to use his book inshallah. Uh, in this volume that I introduced to you before, which is uh, the second volume on practical uh, method of Tazkiyat nafs of self-purification, uh, he uh, starts with Talab. Before this, in previous volume, he has talked about uh, repentance and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but here it starts with talab talab means to really want something to search for something out of deep thirst in our heart and many things that we are going to mention in this journey all fall under talab under this search this uh, you know quest this demand so in this part he uh, starts with explaining the meaning of talab and uh, uh, requirement of talab, continuity of talab, gratitude for talab, and how uh, obstacles can happen in this process and what is the root of all those obstacles. And then inshallah in the next session we will talk about talab in the Quran, in du'as, then we will mention some examples and role models in talab, etc. The concept of talab, I'm sure you are familiar with it. Like, you know, for example, say talabul ilm, faridatun ala kulli muslim, or kulli muslim, muslim, talab, or talabul ilm, means to seek, to want, to request something. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, after performing wajibat and refraining from haram and in parallel to these two things which are about actions uh, after obtaining virtues and removing uh, vices the journey of salik of the wayfarer is through the field of Talab or if I call it Wadi Talab Wadi means valley so this is a Wadi this is a you know, um, field this is a plain of Talab which is very big and vast uh, space and it is the second step after repentance and return there is an ayah in the Quran that maybe people, when they read this ayah, they take it only as an ayah about 
seeking rizq in this dunya, rizq of, you know, food, I don't know, um, clothes, shelter, money, etc. But for a wayfarer, the main rizq is a spiritual rizq, a spiritual sustenance. Let us read the ayah and reflect on the ayah and see how Ayatollah Shuja'i is bringing some important meanings out of this ayah. In Surah Al-Ankabut, verse 17, we have this sentence. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Fabtagu Indallahi Rizq Fabtagu Indallahi Rizq Va'abudu Vashkuru Lah Ilayhi Turja'oon Ibtigha is again similar to Talab. For example, in Allah, you have Bogot al Il. Bogot means to love, seekers of knowledge. In the Quran, we have many times the term Ibtigha. Men and now, Semen Yashri Nafsahub Tigha Amar Zatullah. Or فَإِذَا قُدْ يُزِيَةَ السَّلَاةِ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِنَا So it means talab. فَابْتَقُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْرِزْقِ فَابْتَقُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْرِزْقِ Seek close to God, near God, and Allah. In some lectures we have explained uh, the meaning of Endiyat, which is the nearest position to Allah subhanahu We cannot say Ma'allah, and Allah. So, Rizq should be desired and thought and Allah. What is a wayfarer trying to achieve? Everything that you want to achieve is this. Rizq in Allah. The Quran also says, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أنباطا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون. That is a very high position to be أحياء. Everyone is alive. But to be ahya and near God and receive sustenance from Allah, that's a great achievement. So, فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ This ibtigha is very important. You should search for this, seek this. إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ But you should do talab for risk if you know like for example uh, maybe we have a teacher or an alim who has great knowledge but him having knowledge is not helping with all the problems yes alhamdulillah he has knowledge so he's available to share his knowledge but we should also be seekers of knowledge. We should show our interest. We should request him to teach us. We should try to learn as much as possible. Just so you know, he has knowledge. Allah is razaq, but we need also to do talab for rizq. Fabtagu indallah rizq and worship him or serve him. Ayatollah Shujai says that this talab for rizq near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs ubudiyah to be abd and do what he calls mujahideyah ubudi. It's a very good expression. Mujahideyah ubudi. As a servant, whatever you have to do. You have to do it. All the things that we do comes under va'budu. All the uh, stages, 
that we are going to mention can be achieved through ubudiyah. And if we have talab and we act as a servant, then our Lord is going to take us into all these uh, stages. He's going to guide us all the way. He's not going to leave us alone. But we need to be talib and bring the requirements of servitude. Vashkurullah and be grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, inshallah, if we have time today, we talk about this gratitude. What does it mean here? Elayhaturja'un. You are all going to be sent back to Him. So, this is a journey in front of everyone, but if you want to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are prepared, then we need to go through this process. Otherwise, as we said before, for those who are not prepared, Laqa'ullah is not a pleasant experience because they are very, uh, you know, embarrassed to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he says, maqam talab the position of talab is very vast, has lots of ups and downs, but that in, in the same time, it's very blessed, very uh, much, you know, comes with barakah. We should be really talib. And he says, this talab has to be in its full sense. You know, if, if you are really talib, what do you do? For example, if you are thirsty, really thirsty, then you would not sit somewhere hoping that, you know, someone comes and offers you water. If you are really thirsty and you have talab for water, you would not be sitting, you would not be indifferent. You will be actively looking for water and try to get it. Uh, you know, I have mentioned this uh, story sometimes, you know, that some lectures that a person had a servant and invited some of his friends for a meal and said, my servant has a gift when we are going to have our meal he understands who is thirsty for water who is thirsty for drink and he would tell people were surprised they said okay let's see Someone after some time said, I was thirsty, but he didn't bring water. You said he is going to understand and bring water, but he didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He didn't understand. The host didn't say anything. After some time, someone was really thirsty and he went to take water water was there in a corner for example so he went to take the water then the servant says he is thirsty the one who was sitting and not asking or going for water was not thirsty just a little you know emotion or a little desire but not really thirsty it's not that everyone who says, give me water, is a thirsty person. The one who is thirsty is the one that when it sees water, goes towards water. So it looks like a humor, but it's a very deep idea. As long as we just say, you know, we want qurb ilallah, we want, you know, to be close to Allah, we want to receive light, etc. Just we say it. We wish as a wish, 
This is not considered talab. Talab has to be real. Talab has to be serious. You should have no rest unless you get what you want. This is very important. Therefore, the poet says, Ab kamjui tishnegi avar bedast. Jushadat ab az balavu past. Don't look for water that much. Try to achieve thirst. Then you will see water comes from above, from below. Water comes from everywhere, if you are really a seeker of water. So if someone is really experiencing and showing talab with hints, اشارت های ربوبی, with hints from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes forward step by step up to the end but this needs to be servant and listen to the master when you refer to your heart you can realize whether you are really talib or not if you need something for example, you were talib for a study. For years you went to the school, morning to afternoon. This week, next week, this month, next month, this year, next year. How many years? Then university, till you learned something and got your certificate, you were not stopping. You wanted, for example, to get a job, you wanted to buy a house. Someone was ill, you wanted that person to be cured. This doctor, that doctor, this hospital, that hospital, maybe this country, that country, till you get what you want or you become despaired. You are always searching. Sometimes say what you are looking for is not available. This is yes. In our case, it's the same. You have to search. But the good news is that it's available. It's not something which is not there. It's available, just you need to look for it. Like people who look for hidden treasures. They look for maps. They, you know, ask every person that might have. Then they try to go to that. If they find the map to go there, dig the earth. Finally, they reach. So inside ourselves, we have to see, do we have at least the same amount, the same level of talab for nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or for everything else, we work harder. For everything else, we spend more time, more energy. We are restless. But for this one, we take it easy. This is not acceptable. Mawlavi has beautiful poems about Talab, and we will mention some of them. For example, in the third section of Masnavi, he says, Manegar and Dar Naqshe Zishtukhu Bekhish. Manegar, don't look at your good or bad naqsh. Naqsh means like, uh, uh, you know, some design, something which is, uh, you know, pr available to watch. So, this is, maybe you have Good qualities, bad qualities, <laughs> good appearance, bad appearance, I mean as, um, ethical, as spiritual. Don't look at this, although it's important, but he says this is not the main thing. Binger and Dar Eshko Bartalabe More important than looking at 
you know, you have these virtues or that, uh, those, you know, vices, more important than those things, because they can be, uh, you know, uh, temporary. Look at how much you love, how much you are searching, how much you are thirsty for nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your main capital is talab. If you have talab, you get everything. If you don't have talab, even if you have some good qualities, either you lose them or they stop there. They are not going to make you, you know, rise. من گر این را که حقیری یا ضعیف بنگر اندر همت خود ای شریف Don't look at yourself that you are weak or you know you are very low Yes, we are all very low, we are all needy But look at your him, your ambition. Ambition is the peak of our talab. What do you want to get through this talab? In uh, one of the retreats in Canada, we talked about him, uh, and I think lecture should be available. A sharif, O oh noble person. As long as you have talab for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are sharif. Yes, you may have many problems, you may be haqir, you may be da'if, but you are sharif. To be har hali ke baashi mi talab, ab mi ju da'iman, ay khushk lab. In every condition, you whose lips are dry, look for water, search for water. This is the main thing. Should never be satisfied with what you have. Ayatollah Shujai says there have been many people that they try to embark on a spiritual journey they did tawbah, they tried to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started the journey, they started to do some uh, requirements of ubudiyya, but because they were not serious in their talab, they stopped. For example, when they married, they stopped, or when they had children, they stopped, or you know, when they got busy with you know job, etc., they stopped. Or for example, they were uh, talab in Hose. Then they, when they got busy with teaching and you know having students, writing tabligh, etc., they stopped the real thing. Because all these things, marriage, children, family, community, uh, work, study, everything has to be at the service of our search for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should not be stopped. He says these people who had a good beginning but stopped, if they look into their heart, they themselves realize that they were not serious in their talab. They didn't have the pain of separation, the pain of lacking. They wanted, but as an extra thing. Yeah. Sometimes, for example, you are very thirsty. What you want is water. But, for example, if there is mm, something on the side of that, it's also good, you welcome, you appreciate. <laughs> but you are not really thirsty for that. You're thirsty for water. In Masnavi, again, Mawlavi says, in talab miftah matlubat tost Miftam is key. This search is the key for whatever you want. Matluba means what you want. The key is talab, search. In sepah nusratu rayat tost. If we imagine you have an army which is going to bring you victory. 
This army with all the flags of the army are your talab. Talab is your army. In talab hamchun khurusi dar siyah mi zanad na're ke mi ayad sabah. Like a rooster that in the morning cries, shouts that morning is coming, sobh is coming. Talab says that Vesal is coming, reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming, but Talab must be there. If we don't have good degree of Talab, we are not able to detach ourselves. You know, we say, I want talab, but I want also money, I want a good job, I want also a good car, I want a you know, reputation, I want this, I want that, I want... Uh, how can you really want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and want all these things? And sometimes even uh, equally or even more. You should have focus on your talab and then you say, okay, for talab, to be able to go to this journey, I need health, I need, you know, reasonable life, I need, for example, reasonable uh, means, etc. But not that those become your aims, independent or parallel aims, or sometimes even higher aims. We remain captive under control of different things, if there is no talab. We would be in darkness of being in prison. We don't have that much joy and eagerness. Our joy comes from other things. When we are talking to Allah, when we are making salat, dua, etc., we don't have joy if we ha don't have talab. We lose opportunities. We show weakness and laziness. We compromise about m important things. We are not able to cope with the difficulties and challenges of this journey. And we are not undertaking a riyadha and you know, some self-disciplining which is ne needed. And we postpone, we keep postponing and delaying. So these are all because of having no serious talab. Attar, Attar Neishaburi, a famous poet who has different books like Tathkeratul Awliya, in Mante Qutair, Conference of Birds, which is also translated into English. He says, Mard Bayad, Kaz Talab Vaz Entezar, هر زمان صد جان کند در ره نسار We need a brave person, a strong and brave person that out of talab, out of search and while is expecting and waiting is happy to give hundred lives as sacrifice to the beloved. Die once again come back die second time hundred times is happy to give life to reach the beloved nay zamani as talab saken shabbat it's impossible that a time comes that he is in rest in rest doesn't have talab nay dami asu danash mumkin shabbat there is no even one dam, dam moment means, you know, one moment for breathing. There is no even one moment that has no talab. Gar furu istad zamani az talab, murtadi baushad darin rah bi adab. If a wayfarer stops from talab, then he's no longer a wayfarer. He's a murtad. 
apostate, someone who has left Iman. Maybe, of course, he's a still a believer in a fiqhi sense, kalami sense, but from Irfani sense, this person is murtad. When the lover stops searching for beloved, he's not the lover. He is murtad and be adab. Adab is very important thing, you know. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think uh, one month of Ramadan, we had 10 sessions on adab in Islam. Adab is very, very important. Adab ma Allah, adab ma nas, all these things. Adab, you can say sometimes, you know, politeness, courtesy, uh, this kind of things, having um, polite approach. So if you uh, stop talab, or whoever stops talab becomes murtad and be adab. Be adab means someone who lacks adab. Those who are really understanding, what they do, they try to grow their talab and they pray for talab. We normally pray for the end results, but we should pray for them, it's okay. But we need to pray more for what is the key for those results, and that is talab. Many times we say, oh Allah, you know, I want you, I, you know, I want, you know, to rise, I want this, I want that. But in addition to that, say, oh Allah, I want your love. I want deep desire for you. This is more humbling and maybe uh, puts you in the right direction and orientation that you have to invest on your talab. Attar says, Shab machusbo, ruz ham cheesy machur. Kin talab dar tu padid ayat maga. Don't sleep in the night. Don't eat during the day. So that this talab appears in you. Invest on gaining the talab. Moulavi says, Dar talab chalak sho vin fathebab mi talab. Wallahu a'lam bis-sabab. Be quick and strong and active for gaining talab. The gate of victory in this way will be open to you. And you should look for opening of the gate of victory through asking for talab. And Allah knows what is sabab, what is right. As long as Salik has this talab and dar the talab, the pain of talab, pain in a nice meaning. You know, unfortunately, we normally think of pain as a negative thing. In uh, the book uh, Insan Kamil by Ayatollah Mutahari, we had this discussion. Uh, when you have physical, for example, pain, uh, there is a disease in the body or illness, a problem, and then you have pain. That disease or illness is not good, that's you know, negative. But the pain is not bad, the pain is a matter of awakeness, the pain is a matter of understanding, it's an alarm. Yeah. So we associate pain with the difficulties, but Pain is a sign of growth, a sign of understanding. And those who are greater, they have greater pains for humanity, for uh, what happens in the world, for themselves, etc. So this pain should be there. This restlessness should be there. Har Masnavi says, Har ki cheesy just bi shak yaft u. Whoever looked for something, he found it. 
in Adab al Mutalamin, we have this uh, poem that Man talaba shay'an wajadda wajad. Man gara'a baban walajja walaj. The first is with shadda, the second is without shadda. Jadda wajad. Lajja walaj. Whoever looks for something and is jaddi, is serious, wajada will find it. Whoever knocks at door and insists will enter. Finally, the door will be opened. But you have to keep trying and knocking. Another place he says, Har chedari to zemalo pishei neitalab bud avvalo andishei Whatever you have in other areas of life, mal, money, job, isn't this that first you had ide, idea about it and looked for it and tried to get it and then you found it? So why in uh, spirituality you think it's different? Why here you think you don't need to have talab? And then davam talab. To have talab is important and then to maintain talab and not lose it. Not get busy with other things, not get other priorities. This is also very important. So we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us talab and if you have talab to keep it for you, to grow it for you. And you should be grateful for this gift of talab. Now going back to the ayah in Surah Al Ankabud that we started with. Vashkurullah. He says, be grateful for Allah to Allah for what? For this ibtiga. This talab is a great gift that you have to be grateful for it. And la in shakartum la azidanakum. If you are grateful, inshallah, you will get more. The gift of Talab is great gift and is the source for all blessings to come. How Talab starts? We will have some discussions about it uh, in different places. But here he says, those who are Sahib Delaun and Nuktesanj people of heart who are very careful and very have very good insight they realize that the secret of pain of talab which is a blessed pain is jazbaye maqam rububi is allah's attraction how a lover becomes a lover how love starts it's that the beloved shows some of attractions to the person, then that person falls in love. So love starts from the beloved, not from the lover. The lover may show it, but the initiative comes from the beloved. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that prepares us for this talab but we need to respond we need to appreciate the one who is the most wanted the most loved the most demanded person is so kind that sends invitation to every person and as soon as you feel there is attraction you should grab the opportunity and embark on the journey. Then he has a uh, kind of tazakkur, a kind of uh, you know notice or a kind of you can say warning. And this is a very interesting point. 
very important and uh, it's related to many issues about suffering etc in life you know when it comes to other kinds of uh, talab that you have normally you want to remain what you are and gain something to enjoy for example, you uh, study to learn and, I don't know, get a certificate, get a job, tr you know, etc. You know, have money, you, you look f you know, for opportunity to do business, trade, etc. to, you know, make money, anything. You try to achieve things for your own pleasure, okay? You are not fundamentally changed. You are not in transformation. You are like a, for example, car, you know, that uh, you are driving with a car and you need water, you take some water, you need, you know, some food, you take some, put inside the car. Maybe you fill uh, the car with, you know, what you need different things but you are the driver car is the same car just you get something and you know make it available but in this journey when you are going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with talab it's not a physical journey it's not a journey only in learning etc the whole thing is that the lover should be emptied from himself or herself and be filled with the beloved. It's very difficult. If you want to be emptied from yourself with the, all the love that you have for yourself, all the attachments, all the habits, all the custom years of thinking everything through your own eyes you are the center of the world and now you want to say no i'm not center of the world my beloved is the center of the world and i want to move towards him how you can move towards him what's the greatest challenge what is the greatest distance me this ego, this self is the greatest distance. So we have to make sure that we are ready for challenges that come. If you are not aware of this, these challenges are very difficult, maybe even heartbreaking. You know why that now that I want to go to, uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these problems come. I want to focus on my ibadah, etc. I want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why, you know, I, I have difficulties with, you know, family members, I don't know, friends, community, I don't know, job, etc. Illness. But you must know that actually these are the requirements of your transformation. Your transformation partly is through things that you may expect. I should have more marifa, I should have more focus, more salat, more presence of heart. You know, I have to work on these areas. Yes, of course. But great part of preparation is to get rid of ego. When I see things that I love are being taken away from me it's very painful but if I manage to let my ego be taken away with them illness poverty uh, loneliness etc these are very difficult as long as I am here they are causing pain, injury to me. But if I let that person who is suffering go and empty myself from any personal desire and, you know, 
personal kind of identity and just see what my beloved wants then you would realize that the service that they did to you is much more than the service that your salat or you know your fasting etc did to you these difficulties of life these things that make you sometimes even have no desire for continuing this physical life if you know that you can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without living more anymore if I know that whether I live for 10 years 20 years 30 years or I just die it's going to be the same I should be happy to die now or if I know that if I live longer I'm going to be in a bad sit worse situation I should wish dying now as Imam Zainul Abidin says Ilahi ammerni ma kana umri bidlatan fi ta'atik as long as my life is spent in your obedience so give me long life فَإِذَا كَانَ مَرْتَ عَنْ لِلشَّيْطَانِ فَقْبِذْنِي إِلَيْكِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَسْبَقَ مَقْتُكَ إِلَيَّ أَوْ يَسْتَحْكِمَ غَضَبُكَ عَلَيَّ But if it is going to be used by shaitan, my life is going to be marta' a field for shaitan to feed himself. Take me towards you before your anger comes to me or your anger is fixed upon me. So you should be ready for challenges and difficulties and don't volunteer for them don't volunteer them but when they come don't be afraid be happy because this shows that things are working if there is no calamity no tragedy no suffering then you have to be worried what has happened to me? Why no one is taking me seriously? <laughs> Imagine you go to a school. No one asks you for anything. You go when you want. You come out when you want. No exam, no you know, homework, no assignment, no registration, <laughs> no assembly. It's really like a hotel. Whenever you want, you go and you know, come. Then you have to be worried. Maybe they have not accepted you at all as a student. They have not taken you seriously. Otherwise, difficulties must be there. Test must be there. So, this is a kind of tazakkur, a kind of r reminder, a kind of notice that he gives to the seekers of uh, nearness to Taliban that they should be aware that these problems can happen to help you get rid of your ego. Then he referred to a symbolic story maybe it's not a real story and also he says we are not talking about other things that are mentioned in this story in Masnavi but only this aspect of this story so Mulevi says one day a fly went to Prophet Suleiman Prophet Suleiman was able to understand what you know animals insects say and he had you know control over wind etc this fly went to prophet Suleiman and complained he said you know you are a just king i want to complain about someone who is doing zulm to me so he says pasha umad az hadiqe waz giya az suleiman nabi shud dat kha fly came from a garden and Asked Prophet Suleiman for justice. He said, You should help me. Prophet Suleiman said, Who is your enemy? Who is you know the one who is doing zolm to you? 
گفت پشه داد من از دست باد He said I am complaining from wind Wind is making life for me miserable Because you know when wind comes fly cannot stay When wind comes takes the fly somewhere else So when the Prophet Suleiman said Now that you just is you know tell me who is you know suffering making you suffer پس سلیمان گفت ای انصاف جو داد و انصاف از که میخواهی بگو گفت پشه داد من از دست باد کو دو دست ظلم بر ما گشاد ویند has opened two hands of injustice upon us <laughs> ماز ظلم او به, ننگی, به تنگی اندریم has made it very you know, narrow the life is very miserable for us با لب بسته از او خون میخوریم خون دل خوردن این فارسی وی سی یو نو تو اف یو وانت تو سی ایت لیترالی وی سی نو تو ایت دی بلاد اف یور هارت وین یو ار وری ساف یو نو وری ماچ سافرینگ وی هاف دیس اکسپریشن سو دیس پاشه دیس فلای سید یو نو آی ام سافرینگ ا لات فرام ویند انیوی پروفت سلیمان سید I have to listen to the other party as well because Allah has asked me as uh, a requirement of justice I need to listen to both parties I cannot just listen to you So Pas Suleiman goft Hazrat Suleiman said that uh, to this fly that I have to listen to the other party Haq be man gofte ast han ay dad war مشنو از خسمی تو بی خسم دگر I cannot listen to one side of the complaint I have to listen to both So what happened Prophet Suleiman asked the wind to come When the wind came Then What happened was Pasha was not there The fly was not there Why Because when wind is coming, fly cannot stay there. So there was no way to have both of them present. Ba chun bishnid aumad tiz tiz pashe begrift an zaman rauh goriz. When wind heard the call of Suleiman, came quickly, and then this fly ran away. پس سلیمان گفت که پش کجا باش تا بر هر دو من رانم قضا said why are you leaving stay here so that I can listen to both of you and make the judgment گفت ای شه مرگ من از بود اوست if he is there my death happens my death is from being of wind خود سیاه این روز من از دود اوست My life becomes miserable and dark when he is there او چه آمد من کجا یابم قرار که برارد از نهاد من دمار When wind comes how can I stay He's going to destroy me So What is the message here? The message from this aspect we talk about this story. The message is that fly cannot stay when the wind, when wind comes. What does it mean? Our ego is a small For us is big, <laughs> you see, you know, the whole world is for me, but we are very small beings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be present, all these small individuals, all these small egos will disappear. You have to struggle. How much do you have to struggle so that as a pasha you remain? When the wind is there 
When my ego is there, I suffer a lot. But if my ego goes away, then there is nothing to complain about. This is just, of course, a, you know, an analogy. And as we say, you know, there are lots of other aspects. You know, we say sometimes when you liken something to something from one aspect is helping, but there are lots of differences. Sometimes, you know, you say, you know, someone is like lion, but lion in bravery, not in other aspects. So, this is the point, and I think we can end our session here, that Talab is the main capital that we have. We have to work on it, we have to invest, we have to be grateful for it, we have to ask Allah to keep it for us. And we should also not let problems that may happen take away our courage and take away our morale. Actually, these are signs that you are, you know, starting, you are on the right track that these problems happen. We don't volunteer, we don't ask for problems. We ask Allah for afia, but if they come, don't be disheartened. Just try to understand how to deal with them, how to benefit from them and turn them into opportunities for gaining servitude. Alhamdulillah <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Jazakum Allah khair. Sheikh Hanad Kareem. We have time for some questions if there are. Yes, if there are questions. Okay, so inshallah if anybody has live uh, question, you are welcome. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much. Eid Mubarak to you and everyone else here. May Allah give you a great Eid inshallah. Thank you. I had um, two questions. Uh, the first question is related to Talab and Talab particularly related to, you know, like a, like a teacher, um, not generally, generally, you know, teachers, they want to kind of assess, uh, you know, how serious the students are, especially on this part. Maybe at the beginning, they, you know, they put some big stones and, or, you know, they want to see how much you chase up. So how does, <clears throat> what's the balance to show that you're actually eager and have this talab and at the same time not to kind of disrespect or, you know, get into the person's privacy, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know if every day you go to the person's door or every day you call them or message them, etc. It starts getting a bit too much for them, you know, it's like you're, you're bothering them, but at the same time that's because you have eagerness and you're trying to show that eagerness at the same time if you're out of respect maybe you leave it you don't message you don't follow up you know you say every month then maybe the teacher will think okay this person's a bit you know um, cold or is not very serious mm. that's the first question i had the second question i had is related to again talab you know given the importance of it that we discussed how do we know what level of talab do we have Especially that, you know, we said only part of it is specific amount, the rest of it it's you know, the, the trans is the transformation of the inner self, which is, you know, the way you deal with your family, parents, children, etc. You know, how do how do we know where we are in that spectrum of that up? Do we really have it or not? Because it's not something like maybe tangible that you can measure how much you read and that's irrelevant. Is it just a state that you really, really want something? Uh, but then obviously in practice, you know, you have responsibilities that you have to deal with. So, you know, how, how is that? That's, um, what's the litmus test for that? Thank you. Yeah. With respect to the first question, if you have established objectively that someone is a good ustad, is a good mentor, is a qualified person because sometimes maybe someone you know says you know I, I don't have anything to offer and 
can be really they don't have this but if you have established that someone is really a good ustad and you know can take you as a student in this path and the only thing is that uh, they want to see how interested you are then you have to first pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften their heart you know like Onwan Basri that Imam Sadiq first didn't accept him then he went and prayed and then went back and Imam salam welcomed him because Allah is the one who has control over hearts if you are really Talib and this person has really something to offer so you ask Allah to soften his heart and then refer to that person again but pray hard and sometimes you go in person you know I think it was uh, Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh and Allama Tabatabai that you know first he cried even in front of Allama Tabatabai so that he accepts him so you should not give up but pray to Allah and see how it works better without annoying that person about understanding our talab uh, it's uh, difficult to have a you know very mm, a specific m a standards or you know, measures but because our sensitivity is not that maybe uh, strong but you can at least see the range of talab that you have by seeing what gives you the greatest joy in your life what is the greatest motivation that you have in your life you know uh, sometimes for example my greatest motivation is you know to get a better job or you know to have you know mm, as a maybe a Jose for example teacher you know to have you know more students you know more books you know understand a lot you know give good lectures etc or I don't know in any field someone the engineer businessman doctor etc teacher you know mother you know father you know children so we may have aims for all these areas but what is the greatest motivation that I have in life <coughs> why I want to continue this life the main reason uh, what is something that whenever I am to uh, uh, know myself comes to my mind I, during the day during the night when I am at home when I am traveling what is the main thing for me is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and search for him or other things so in this way we can understand uh, the level of our talab uh, is there any other question? Yeah, there is one question, Shaykhana. Yes. Can you please give some advice as to how to practically increase our sincerity in the desire to have talab? How do we achieve the in, uh, initiation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards talab? Yes. I think we need to uh, sit for some time and really go deep into our heart and mind and see now we all have lived enough to have a realistic understanding of life maybe when we are very young you know we are not able to understand uh, some of the thing because we are so excited so emotional you know for example you know some people think you know if they marry that's the greatest thing you know or if they are married and they have children you know I don't know if they have you know job if they have you know but I think now we have reached a, a stage of life that we can really sit and see what is worth pursuing 
not that other things are not important but with all the potentials that Allah has given us with the spirit that Allah has given us with the things that are waiting for us those stations which are waiting for us what should we do I think if we really sit and you know put our thoughts together without you know being uh, rushed or without being you know pressurized we realize that we don't have anything else that you know can give satisfaction anything else that I would not regret later that in you know, why I spent my life on that if I have that one I have everything if I don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything else is not that much you know important so we should reach this clear understanding that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can give us satisfaction it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can really give us joy enduring joy and then automatically sincerity comes because uh, when nothing else is important when nothing else has attraction then why we shouldn't be sincere insincerity is because we think other things are important but what are other people going to do for me or what are other things going to give me if I don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so tafakkur is very important inshallah in future we have also discussion about fikr to think to contemplate to keep repeating this even these azkar invocations you know when we say Allahu Akbar when we say you know la ilaha illallah subhanallah alhamdulillah these all help us achieve sincerity and then how do we achieve the initiation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this attraction this jazabat maybe when you are a teenager maybe later maybe when someone god forbid dies you know sometimes people when they lose someone then they start feeling you know great attraction towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spirituality because they were very busy with dunya and this was a wake-up call for them and when for a moment they don't listen to the voice of dunya then attraction is felt he i think he is sending invitations all the time just is a matter of that at certain times we are able to sense it otherwise he's always uh, kind to attract us and send attractions uh, when you know like for example uh, you have you know this you know microphone something in your you know earphone you cannot hear even if someone is shouting you cannot hear unfortunately dunya has uh, made our ears unable to hear and I eyes not to be able to see and Amir al Mu'minin says this is the power of dhikr that brings mm, uh, polish it polishes the heart tasma'u bihi ba'da al-waqrah wa tanqadu bihi ba'da al-mu'anadah tubsiru ba'da al-ashwah after you were not able to see you become able to see after you were deaf you start hearing your heart was rebellious now is obedient zikr helps with removing the obstacles and then you would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close he's very kind he's inviting us he's loving us and the amazing thing is that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special invitation for every person every person for him is unique every like of course it's Allah's example is greater but for example if you have 
one child or ten children or twenty children. <laughs> no one has twenty children, but suppose someone has twenty. Every child is special. Every child is unique. So Allah is much greater, of course, than parents. We should be sure that Allah loves us. You, whatever you are, whatever is your condition, you are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has the best of plans for you. Real plans, not idealistic plan. Allah has the best plans for you and is happy to help you to grow. If you are a good teacher, you have ability and willingness to help all your students to grow, not just one of them or few of them because they are more, for example, successful. You want all of them to grow. As much as you can, you give them. As much as you can, you give them time, resources, whatever. And Allah has unlimited time and resources. So love is there, attention is there, and He is waiting for us. So if we prepare ourselves, certainly we will feel the attractions and initiations already have started by Him.